Ah, the mini-me. We made a lot of progress on the mini-me. I'm going in the front door. I'll meet you in the back. Go in the front door, come down the nice wide aisle. Look at that. Isn't this cute? This is cozy. I like this. We made a lot of progress this week. This is Friday. We started Monday. We made a lot of progress. Where do you see this? All week we've been nipping and tucking, you know, cut an inch, add an inch, making sure all the proportions are just right in here. So in the back, uh, this area, this thing you can see here, this is a storage cubby. There's one on top here that you access from the top. And there's another one down in there. This is cardboard, just in case you were wondering. This is just a stand-in for demonstration purposes. Cardboard. We're going to be replacing it with a product called Cintrus. Cintrus is kind of like plexiglass, quarter inch thick, comes in four by eight sheets, uh, but it's very durable and it's a dull, dull matte finish. That's the one I'm getting. It's a real matte, chalky, dull finish. Sometimes you can get with a little pebbly detail in it, texture. Uh, Thunder Gray, that's what these are going to be with the uh, aluminum, really nice. And then I'm going to have black trim, we're going to have black edge banding on walnut. This is going to be a beautiful van. Uh, what I'm doing with this van is I am styling this van after van number one, Humble Road van number one, which had that beautiful striated gray floor. Then I had Thunder Gray low, Dove Gray middle, and white on top. So we're picking up on that color theme throughout this little mini me. So I started out with a 70 inch bed, 70 inches, okay? It's not even six feet, it's five foot 10. And I put this down at the tail end. That's the only way I could get this storage down at the tail end. Now nobody sleeps like a cadaver anyway, right? You do a little curling. This was very important to me. When you've got such a tiny camper like this, you need to have really good storage space, easy access everywhere. So I'm really pleased the way this came out. And it's the footboard, so it's locked on to the bed module. Very good. Let me take you on a little tour in here. Come on. You like the helicopter ride, right? Here we go. There is my storage bin. Isn't that cute? Right? You got storage on in there. And then you come up to the top, you got a nice, these are big. You can get a lot of stuff in there, right? Maybe your water hoses, your electrical connections. This van's gonna have shore power as well, 30 amp shore power. Here's the back end of the galley, uh, my water pump, and right down here is my gray tank. I've got a six gallon gray tank, and uh, just ahead of it there is a 14 gallon fresh water tank. And we've got a nice, big, beautiful sink. This is a sexy sink, very jazzy. Look at that. So now this galley, you can see I'm working on some kind of a hutch. I'm not sure how this is gonna go just yet, but you see those bars I have going up and across. Uh, I'm gonna put in some kind of a hutch, some kind of shelf in there. Not sure what that's gonna be just yet. On this side, under the bed, I've got a toilet, then I've got two drawers, and then down the end, let me take you all the way down there so you can look. Mini me. <gasps> What's that? A Dometic refrigerator freezer. The Dometic CFX25. Uh, it's the unit that Caramaro is pointing to now. Anyway, uh, very nice unit. Very nice fridge freezer. It's just big enough. Again, I built this van for one person, an individual, a solo traveler. Yeah, I've seen micro campers where the bed converts and there's two people sleeping there. Uh, but that's about it. You know, if you pull that bed out, now you've restricted access to your galley in every which way. And it's two people living in this little thing. It's just not practical. Let's move you into a bigger van, bigger wheelbase, a little bit wider, all right? One person. So it works, it's perfect. This little guy acts as a nightstand. 
You know, you could put it wherever you want it. Uh, it's got a really nice digital display. Uh, it's a gutsy, it's a very gutsy unit. And uh, the reason I chose this one, um, it's a quality product. Um, there were some German brands of uh, coolers, refrigerated coolers, uh, that review very well, very well. Uh, I'm just concerned about service in the United States. Okay, this is primarily where these vans are gonna be used. Uh, a Dometic is, is no newcomer to this industry. Uh, you'll be able to get this serviced, replaced, whatever the case may be, easily. There's a big network involved and in place. And that's how I approach, when I pick, a, when I pick an appliance, I only look at blue chip companies. I want the best of the best. The big deciding factor, once quality's out of the way, is what happens when it breaks. Not if, when. This first bay, oh, first I got it. Look at this, look at this bed platform. This was done on the CNC machine. Ron, Myron, he is a rock star with that CNC machine. Oh man, he's doing incredible things with it. First week, he just started Monday. So down here in the first bay, we're gonna have a nice big drawer that comes all the way out, full length. And right above that is my 3000 watt inverter. I got my battery tucked in there. I'll take you around the other side and you'll look at that. And I got two cavernous drawers down here and there's the porta potty. So here's the galley, another view. So you've got the sink and then you're gonna have a big counter area. That's a two foot counter area. And then this open box here is gonna be two drawers. One drawer stacked on the other. So the top drawer is for your induction cooktop. And then the next drawer down would be for your utensils or vice versa. You've got the option. It's very cozy in here. So obviously uh, we got a little bit of a height issue. I don't have my, uh, my foam mattress in place just yet. So we are gonna have a bit of a problem. I'm gonna have to compress this thin slate slightly once I put in my ceiling stretchers and my ceiling panels and we get the, the bed uh, foam on the bed. Uh, that's the reason we went with these. We took a sheet of plywood and we made our own uh, sling system, like a hammock, uh, you know, the way that slings underneath a mattress. So I'm hoping with a three inch memory foam mattress and this slatted sling system, they seem a little stiff right now, but I'm gonna test this I'm gonna sleep in here a couple of nights and see how comfortable it is. Uh, I can make this softer. We can tune this by making the slats um, narrower. You got quite a large aisle uh, to work in here. I'm gonna put a gooseneck faucet in and then you can have your induction cooktop here or you can take it outside. So we're gonna have that option. I don't wanna recess it in the countertop. So we'll have it in a drawer. I'll give you two galley drawers right here. And the rest of the galley is tanks. Uh, I do not feel as though there is any safe place under this van to store tanks, to mount uh, gray water tanks. It's just, it's, it wouldn't be the, the smart thing to do. So that's why you've got a six gallon water tank, but I've got a very, very easy system for evacuating that water. 14 gallons of fresh water. And of course that is gonna be filtered in and then it's gonna have the filter and purification system that I put in my bigger vans with the UV light. So your drinking and cooking water is gonna be through that filtered UV system. So it's purified. Uh, you know, those, those late nights where you gotta get up and take a pee? Well, here's a toilet. It just slides right out. And I got this set up that I can fit on it, okay? You put your arm like this. And uh, if you don't fit, or this is a little too crowded for you, you can slide the toilet out into the large opening at the side slider. There's a big spot there in front of the refrigerator where you can do your business, then slide it back. I didn't want to put this toilet under the bed up there by your head. No, down here by your feet. And then the other thing that's nice about this, let me show you, stay there. When it's time to empty it, Take it right out. It slides right out the back. That's, again, all of this stuff, I thought this through. This van's been in my pea brain for a long time. Oh, there's one thing that I, I have not resolved at this point. 
hot water. Now, it would be very easy for me to put my small isotemp water heater, four gallon, you know, that barrelized one, that uh, runs on a heat exchanger and it's also 750 watts uh, electric element for heating. Now I've got a Xantrex XC Pro 3000 inverter in this van along with the Lithionics 315 GTX battery. So I got 315 amp hours of lithium, a 3000 watt inverter. I could easily make my hot water, 750 watts, easily make my hot water. In fact, I can buy that heater with a 1500 or an 1800 watt upgrade internal uh, heating element. Uh, but I'm going to try to um, bring the coolant from the engine. Now in my big vans, I can do my own closed loop. I have my own glycol reservoir. I have my pump, goes to my heat exchanger. And all I do to break into the vehicle coolant line is I cut the line and I put each end on my heat exchanger. I can't do this. I don't have room for that type of a system. So if I wanna make free hot water while we drive, I've gotta extend those coolant lines back to this heater and then back into the, now, a lot of people do it. I don't like doing it because those coolant lines are exposed. If any of those lines gets cut, this vehicle is inoperable. Uh, my closed loop system, if any of those lines get cut, the vehicle drives on, you just don't make hot water. So I'm like this about it. Uh, I've seen some very nice little under sink water heaters, on demand at the point of use water heaters. Bosch makes one that's got a, like a two and a half gallon tank, but I think it's 30 amps to heat that up. Uh, there are a few of them that are 1500 watts and they're not a, a reservoir, it's a, it's a coil. So your water runs through. I don't know how good those are. I could easily manage 1500 watts uh, through my inverter and, and on that battery. I've got solar on the roof, I've got, um, alternator charging while we're driving. We got a, a, an Orion a 30 amp charger from Victron. I've got shore power on this van. Uh, we'll have an outdoor shower. You know, I'll make sure that this gooseneck has a, an extended wand that you can click outside. So it's got everything the big vans have. And it's right now for one person, not for two people, this bed does not convert. This is a twin bed and it stays here just like that. And I, I recommend you put pillows back here so you can relax. But when you're in bed, tucked in, there'll be a cinema screen right here. I'm big on that cinema screen. So we'll have the projector up there. You watch a movie. If you watch that movie with a set of Bose headphones, for instance, noise canceling headphones, you can crank that movie, right? Pitch black, nice big screen. Nobody would know you were in here. Your world now is in, the, in your head, between your ears. That's where I live most of the time. It's a scary place. So here on the driver's side is all of the physical plant for the van. Down here, I'll be standing these uh, controllers up vertically so they can ventilate. And then you can see the drawer that's gonna be coming in that box. Uh, this box here represents our battery. It's just like a large shoe box. It's a very efficient use of space. And then uh, I've got this little shelf in here, which is the top of the drawer box. And here we got our 3000 watt inverter, very tidy package, that XC Pro inverter. And then this area would be reserved for my fuses, my breakers, my bus bars. So the bed is made up of four different cavities. And this first one, is the physical plant, all the electrical. And then the next two are also drawers, but I may have to grab that one next to the toilet for a water heater uh, if I decide to go that route. And then the last one down the end is the, is the uh, toilet. And these will all be sitting on finished flooring. You see this cutout down here. There is a, uh, there's an access panel, access hatch, that goes through to some engine component under the van. I forgot which one it was, but we need to leave access. We cannot seal that in. So you gotta be careful if you're building out one of these uh, ProMaster City vans, um, don't seal that off. You always have to leave access for that.